Hello, and welcome to the Treplow United Methodist Church. I'm Pastor Mary Beth. This is Sunday, June 5th, 2022. Let's begin with our scripture reading. We're going to find it in the Gospel of Matthew in the 5th chapter, beginning with the 25th verse. Therefore I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or what you will drink, or about your body, what you will wear. Is not life more than food and the body more than clothing? Look at the birds of the air. They neither sow nor reap nor gather into barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not more value than they? And can any of you by worrying at a single hour to your span of life? And why do you worry about clothing? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They neither toil nor spin. Yet I tell you, even Solomon in all his glory was not clothed like one of these. But if God so clothes the grass of the field, which is alive today and tomorrow, is thrown into the oven, will he not much more clothe you, you of little faith? Therefore do not worry, saying, What will we eat, or what will we drink, or what will we wear? For it is the Gentiles who strive for all these things. And indeed your heavenly Father knows that you need all these things. But strive first for the kingdom of God, and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. So do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will bring worries of its own. Today's trouble is enough for today. May these words bless and inspire us this week. A woman was nervously waiting at the airport for her husband to return from his skydiving lesson. The pilot approached her and said, I'm sorry, there's been an accident. I have some bad news, and some good news, and then some more bad news, and then some more good news. The bad news is your husband fell out of the plane. The good news is he had his parachute on. The bad news is the chute, I'm sorry, the bad news is he hit the ground before his chute could open. The good news is we hadn't taken off yet. We all have our favorite news outlets. We are NPRers, we are ABCers, we are CBSers, we are CNNers, we are Foxers. And then of course there's, you know, Facebook and Twitter and Snapchat and TikTok and on and on. We have no shortage of news outlets, places to find news. And usually it seems that the news that grabs interest, that guarantees that we'll watch it and therefore guarantees that ads will sell is bad news. It is usually offered in messages right around 60 seconds long because our, our attention spans are short. These bad news bits, they flow in a ticker at the bottom of the screen pretty endlessly or out of the newscaster's mouth in a steady succession of stories that are pretty depressing. Now perhaps you heard last week that more bodies were discovered in that um, building that tragically collapsed in Iran said that now there's more than 33 dead. That same day in the corner of my iPad screen I saw that a nine-year-old nine girl survived a rare puma attack in the state of Washington. Rising sea levels and climate change continue to threaten polar bear habitat. Meanwhile Shanghai again lifted a two-month COVID shutdown. A North Carolina man who won $10 million in the lottery in 2017 was sentenced to life in prison without the possibility of parole for shooting to death his girlfriend in 2020. And more mass shootings in our country here. Buried away beneath these screens is the story of Benny, no, sorry, Manny Vanillas. He's a nurse at New York's Cohen Children's Medical Center, and he was often hospitalized when he was a child. Well, now he sings to his littlest patients as the IV is going in. He does a little dance when the little girl, six-year-old girl with cancer, has to have yet another inje injection. He tells goofy stories when even ice cream doesn't sound good. And there is no doubt that compassion fatigue sets in when another horrific story about Vladimir Putin's invasion of Ukraine comes across our screen. Did you see 
that LeBron James promised all of the students at the I, he surprised all the students at the I Promise School on their last day. James started the I Promise School in 2017 for severely at-risk kids. Does any of the good news make up for the lives lost in Ukraine or Uvalde or Buffalo or Milwaukee? Of course it doesn't. Good news doesn't cancel out the bad news. That isn't the point. The point is that these bad news, good news stories live side by side more often than not. Three weeks ago, I was celebrating a friend's birthday. We were having lunch at a restaurant in Eau Claire. We decided to go to a nearby greenhouse and <laughs> buy more plants that we didn't need. And the traffic was really heavy on 93, on Highway 93, so I carefully pulled out to cross the four lanes of traffic and head for the greenhouse. The bad news is that I never saw the car that slammed into me at 55 miles an hour. The good news is that Subaru's Starlink program works great, and 911 was called within five minutes. The bad news is that I couldn't see the condition of the other car because my airbags had deployed. The good news is that the airbags deployed. The bad news is that I didn't know how the other driver was because I couldn't see him. The good news is that I could see my friend and I could take her hand and I could tell her that I loved her. The bad news is that both cars were totaled. The good news is that we all walked away from them. And the good news is that other than a mild concussion and some bruises and stiffness, all I feel is grateful. In a previous pastor at one of my church families suffered a barn fire. Everything was lost, their modest equipment, their beloved animals. It was awful. They were newly married, um, struggling a bit financially, and, and they, they just worked so hard. Although they were very thankful to be unhurt. This was really bad news. A month later, our little country church sponsored a benefit for them. In a town of under 300 people, $15,000 was raised to help them get on their feet. Now, did that money bring back the heifers? Did it replace all the equipment? No, it didn't. But it kept people from feeling paralyzed. It shifted the situation from, from hopeless to hopeful, and that's always good news. Every one of us in everything that we say out loud, um, everything we choose to spend our time on, and how we offer ourselves as servants of Christ to our family and friends and people that we come into contact with in our social networks, our jobs, we're newscasters for the world. We have the power to help others handle the bad news by being displayers and conveyors of God's good news. Maybe it's just human nature, but I wonder when we decided that the worst news deserves the most attention. It sure didn't start with Jesus because every year we leave Good Friday behind to celebrate and embrace the good news of Easter. Still, we don't want to be excessively optimistic as Barbara Brown Taylor puts it. We don't want to be labeled a Pollyanna. We don't want to say things like, therefore I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat, or what you will drink, or about your body, what you will wear. Is life not more than food, and the body more than clothing? We sure don't want to say something as crazy as, so do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will bring worries of its own. Today's trouble is enough for today. Now we don't know what our big stories are going to be this week, but as an ambassadors for the God of all that is good. We will look high and low for the saving news in our world of disaster and survival, of violence and caring kindness, of war and the wonder of surprises, of crashes and walking away from them. The bad news is that there will be bad news. The good news is that God loves us through all of it. Amen.